Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in the past, I've covered how to receive APT from weather satellites passing overhead using software defined radio and then decoding those automatic picture transmissions into an image like this. Now, essentially, these pictures are taken from space as they pass overhead and transmitted back to Earth so that weather agencies can see what's going on in the clouds. Now, these transmissions happen on around 137 MHz and they are right hand circular polarized. And normally, there is no need to have the antenna follow this satellite and a fixed position antenna like a cross dipole or quadrophilia helix antenna would be good enough. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at HRPT, which is high resolution picture transmission. Now, these transmissions are transmitted from the same weather satellites but on a different frequency between 1.6 and 1.7 gigahertz. Now these images are higher in resolution and provide more detail than the APT pictures do. For this, we'll need a more specialized antenna and we'll need to track the satellite as it passes overhead. Now we could go ahead and use a massive expensive dish, which automatically rotates and tracks satellites as they pass by. Or we can purchase a ready-made hand trackable antenna, a bit like this. Now this antenna comes as a kit and the main rear reflector appears to be made from some kind of Faraday cloth. So it's a pretty neat design. Now it's foldable and it's also very lightweight. So great for attaching to a tripod and hand tracking those satellites as they pass by. Now I've never done this before, but later in the video, we'll give it a go and we'll see if we can track a satellite transmitting a HRPT signal and then decode it to an image. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, this antenna comes as a kit with some 3D printed parts that you do need to assemble. Now, the first part to assemble is the helix holder. This is the main receiving part of the antenna. Now, once you have the helix frame assembled like this, you can now thread through the included copper wire, which actually has already been bent into a coil so you just need to feed it through each of the holes in the helix support arms and work your way up. Now, once you've threaded it all through the holes, you should be left with an SMA socket just tailing off at the bottom. Now, we now need to attach that helix mount to the included aluminium reflector plate. There is a hole in the center for a bolt which will hold the helix to the reflector. Also, at this point, we need to attach the SMA socket to that aluminium plate. Now this bit is actually a bit fiddly, but we need to attach this little 3D printed part in the center using the same bolt which holds the helix mount to the reflector. Now I kind of wish I fitted this first before threading the wire as it would have been easier to get to the center of it. However, once this is attached, you can slide one of those white pieces of included tube into that 3D printed part, which we just attached in the center. Now this white plastic tube will eventually slide on the end of the center of the boom of the antenna, essentially becoming the receiving part of the whole assembly. So now it's time to head outside and finish the assembly. Now the other white plastic tube that you get inserts into the back of the dish and the gray 3D printed part with two zip ties is used to attach just here. In the base of that 3D printed part, there will be a nut which is the correct threaded size to be used with a standard camera tripod. Now with the head of the tripod slightly loose, you can hold onto the white plastic part that sticks out of the rear to position the dish and essentially point it towards the satellite that's tracking and moving across the sky. To make sure we're going to receive the best we can, I'm going to be using a Nualec Sawbird Plus GOES LNA. Now this is attached directly to the SMA socket on that aluminium reflector. Now the Silbird Plus GOES LNA is a low noise amplifier and it's also filtered, meaning it should only allow through the signals that we want to receive around 1.7 gigahertz. I then have some rather lightweight coax going off to an Air Spy Mini, which is plugged into my Windows laptop computer. Now the Air Spy Mini is an SDR receiver, software defined radio receiver, and this is what the antenna connects to. Now for this demonstration, I'll actually use three applications. Although if I was a seasoned performer of this dark magic, then I could actually get away with just using two pieces of software. But firstly, I will need an application called G Predict. Now there are other applications like this out there, 
but gpredict is the one that I use. Now this will tell me when the next weather satellite is going to be visible from my location. You'll also be able to look at the satellite specification with regards to the frequency used on the transponder. Some HRPT signals can be on 169A or 1701 or 1707 megahertz, but just make a note of the HRPT frequency in this transponder window. Next, I'll take a look at the polar plot as that will give me a rough idea from where I should be pointing the antenna as the satellite is moving across the sky. Now, this will give me a rough idea of what direction to point the dish and then which angle to move it and hopefully track it. Now, you can use a mobile app for this, I believe, but I have yet to decide on which one to use. Maybe if you guys have got a recommendation on which satellite tracking application I could use on my iPhone, then let me know down in the comments below. I also have an Android phone, so if it's only on Android, also let us know in the comments. Now, as a NOAA satellite prediction from GPredict started to appear on the horizon, I started to point the dish north of me and started to pick up these signals around 1.7 gigahertz. Now, you can tell which type of HRPT signal is being received by how it looks on the SDR software, a bit like this. Now, the software that you can see on the screen now is SDR++, which is the software receiving the signals. However, I could have used an application called SatDump, which receives and decodes these transmissions at the same time. However, I wanted to capture a recording of the baseband using SDR++, and then later on process those baseband recordings in SatDump using the offline processor. Now, as the satellite moves across the sky, you'll notice the amplitude of these signals drop. So you will need to manually move the dish to try and track the path of the satellite, which should result in stronger signals and could be seen clearly on the SDR software. Now, once the satellite had passed, I stopped the baseband recording and then ran the sat dump application. On the offline tab, you need to specify which decoder to use. Now, in this case, I selected the NOAA HRPT decoder and then you select the input file, which is the baseband recording file. Then you set an output folder where all the decoded files will be written to. Finally, you can press the start button and then sat dump will now process that baseband file. With everything crossed, we hoped that the baseband file contains the satellite's transmission and once complete, sat dump will now process the data and write any images to the output folder we specified earlier. Now in that folder, you'll find lots of other new folders, but this one contains the images we need. Now you can go through all of the images to see how well your hard work has paid off, and hopefully you'll get something like this. The lines or noise lines is where the data stream was interrupted by low signal levels from the satellite transmission. Now the more you practice at hand tracking, the less of these will occur. Like I said, some of these images are really interesting to look at, just like this one, which overlays the received image onto a world map and even placing it in the location where the photo is taken. The one last thing to mention, and that's this website. It's an extremely useful resource all about receiving APT and HRPT signals and how to decode them, even how to build some antennas. If you're new to this, then I'll definitely recommend taking a look. Now I'll leave a link to this website in the video description, along with a link to the dish featured in this video. I'll also leave some links to some hardware, like the Sawbird LNA that I use in this video. Anyway guys, I appreciate you watching this video, and until the next one, take care.